All right, welcome to our review video of ladder diagrams. Um, before I jump into this video, I do wanna say that we're not gonna go super in depth on these. I am going to bring up some new concepts and those main concepts would be things like um, wire color and wire numbering, okay? They're gonna be kind of the mo main focus of this, this class. Um, that we're not gonna talk a heck of a lot about the actual schematic. There's gonna be some few things that I'm gonna throw out um, to kind of get your mind maybe rejogged in that direction. But for the most part, if you don't understand this, you probably need to take a step back and even look into our um, basic electrical class. Otherwise, um, I'm, I'm pretty confident, even if you are struggling a little bit, this video is gonna clear it up, but don't think this is the end all. If you guys have questions or you need help, um, please look back at that last class, all right? Um, like I said, we're gonna talk about wire coloring and wire numbering. Now, why are wire numbering and wire coloring so important? Well, it comes down to troubleshooting. What happens is you're gonna be having some problems with your circuits or even when you're actually at work, you're gonna be having some problems with the circuit out there. Now, what you can do is you're gonna be at the component, you're gonna be able to read the wire number and then you're gonna go back and look at the schematics and you're gonna be like, I know I'm looking for wire 12 and you're gonna find wire 12 and then you're gonna be able to troubleshoot why it's not working. Now, I do wanna say this is not the end all information about wire numbering. Wire numbering is specific usually to manufacturers. It's also specific to manufacturing plants. So by that I mean like a, a plant that makes, I, I'm trying to think like a, like a palletizer might have a different numbering system than the actual manufacturing plant that's, that's in. They might make up their own numbering system. So ours is gonna be a lot more basic, but it's gonna get you into the mindset of this is how you troubleshoot. I am gonna say, if we come over and we are helping you and your wire numbering is all messed up, it's gonna be like a direct, let's restart, let's kinda tear this all apart and let's rework this. Um, it is gonna be required for every activity that you do in this class to have your, num your, your wires numbered. Um, and it's, it's gonna help you. You're really gonna like it as soon as you get going. And then when you actually have to do some troubleshooting, you're gonna be like, man, this is the thing. So take it, pay attention right now, it's gonna be worth it. Wire coloring is kind of a lot the same, um, but it's a little bit more, I guess, uh, primitive. It's not quite as good. A lot of times you're gonna open a cabinet and all of the wires will be white or they'll be blue or something like that. So the wire coloring is kind of just, kind of not a little bit less important, but still very important for this class. You wanna make sure you got your wire coloring correct. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump into it. I wanna talk about the ladder diagram um, and you know, we'll kinda of, kind of go on from there and we'll talk about coloring, okay? So what I've done is I went ahead and I drew my transformer up top. Now remember, the power that comes into the transformer is going to be called our incoming power, while the power in this part of the circuit is gonna be called our control power. So our control power for this circuit is going to be 24 volts AC. Remember, you can have DC ones, um, but AC is a little bit more popular for what we like to do in the classroom. Definitely when you guys start getting into our PLC stuff, a lot more things are going to be DC. Um, now, is it possible that you could be running the whole um, control power off of 120 volts? Absolutely, 120 volts is a very common power. A lot of times you'll see like very, I, don't, I would call it like um, simpler setups being just 120 volts, mainly because they might be actually running something that is 120 volts, so they just can eliminate having a transformer altogether if they go ahead and just have all of their control power being 120 volts, all right? So it's gonna come down from that transformer. A lot of times the transformer is gonna have some terminal numbers kind of stuff on there, and a lot of times the wires that come right off of that transformer are going to carry that, that uh, terminal number. So a lot of times you'll see them come off that transformer and it'll be like, a, like an X1. I've seen an X1 is a pretty popular one. Um, it might be something, you know, maybe this one over here would be X2, or I'm sorry, that's a one X2. And it will be X2 all the way down this leg. And unless it passes through a component, which brings us to our first component on this side, which will typically be our, our breaker. And I'm just gonna draw it in like this, okay? Now the breaker is usually drawn up on this top shoulder, but I have seen it drawn on the side. I've also seen breakers in every rung. That, you know, they, each breaker or each rung will actually have its own breaker. So we're gonna go ahead and let's call this one X1 here. 
Well, now it's gonna to change to wire number one. A lot of times the X, like I said, kind of really de designates that transformer. So it's gonna come down and all the way down this wire, it will be called number one. So that means if we have a, a rung that comes over here, this wire here is still going to be number one until it goes into a switch. So remember our, where our switches or our push buttons might look something like this. And usually a, like, a, like an e-stop button would look something like this. And then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna pass through. So remember it has number one here, but now it's gone through an item. So now it's gonna be called a number two. So this will be now wire number two. So if I was, again, I was digging in that cabinet and I pulled wire number two out, I'm like, oh, I know this is gonna be after that e-stop. So I'm gonna be able to figure out that, okay? So it's gonna go up to something over on this side and I'm going to go ahead and we're gonna talk about relays for a quick second. It's gonna go into our relay. And remember, you wanna make sure when you're labeling these that this one will be a, a CR for control relay and it's gonna probably have a number one next to it. Now some um, schematics will actually have the part number listed for each one of these in the schematic. That's not gonna to be totally required for our class. It's not required at all. Um, but just know you might get on one and you're like, man, there's a lot of extra numbers here. But usually what they're doing is they're calling out either specifications for this or this component, the part number for that component, something of that sort, okay? And then, so remember, this one is still wire number two. Now, it's going to go ahead and connect to our common so if this one, let's call it, let's say the whole thing could either be X1, but a lot of times they will designate a return wire that no matter what in that plant, the return wire is always number Y or wire number 24, or it could be wire number two or wire number three, okay? So let's go ahead and say it's wire number three in this one. No matter how many rungs, the return wire will always be number three, okay? And this is, I wanna spend a quick second talking about wire coloring now. Now for our 24 volt um, circuits, we're going 24 volt AC, we're gonna be using red and white. Now, uh, red and white are just kind of a, a common one that I've found as throughout my research as being the ones that are used. Usually the red will be your hot or your incoming power and the white will always be that return. So this number three wire over here will be white while everything on this side would be that red, okay? So wire color is very important, especially because you're gonna have that one white wire that might go through the whole circuit. Well, now you can be like, oh, I know the white wire is always gonna be my return, okay? So there's there's some kind of good stuff about that. It's really gonna help us out, even if you're, you guys are having problems to walk over and be like, why do you have two white wires hooked up to this or something like that, okay? So it's really a good idea to get in that habit and make sure it happens. If we see that it's not wired correctly, you will be required to fix it um, before we can move forward, all right? So now I do wanna talk about how many rungs are in a uh, ladder diagram. So the first rung is always gonna be labeled our number one rung. While the next rung, and we're gonna just kinda of draw this one, cause I also wanna put in a contact from our CR1. Again, you wanna make sure that you have it labeled CR1 and it's going to continue on, and let's just have it turn on white for this, for this particular talk. We can have multiple rungs, and one rung can actually control another rung. So this, this relay will, as soon as it has power, it's gonna go ahead and click on this uh, contact, it's gonna go ahead and connect them, turn our light on, okay? Now, like I was saying, there's multiple rungs, so this would be rung one, while this would be rung two. Notice that now we've used one, wire one, which again, this one will be wire one right here because this is all one wire. Um, and this is wire two. Well now this one, well this is also wire three, I'm sorry. Well this one's gonna have to be wire number four. We're gonna have to draw four. And then this one would be wire number three. Again, if we were to go down and actually draw another um, ladder or another rung, this would be rung number three. So, and on this one, we can maybe have another, let's have another push button of some sort. We'll do something like that over to another, oops, my uh, quality's not getting any better, huh? Another light, again, this will be ter or wire number one, and it would become to a wire number five. This one would be five again, and then this one over here would be three. 
Now, if let's say I had something in here, let's say I had two switches. So I was doing an and circuit. So we'll go ahead and we'll kind of come over. We'll do another, do another, let's call this one a push button, right? Well, this one would be number five here. And then now this one would be number six and a number six. And this one would be a number three. Okay. So you can have multiple things in here and then the, you're just going to have multiple wires, multiple wire numbers. Most of the time they'll kind of plan for about 10 wires in one rung. All right. Like I was saying, you're going to, some of the times you're going to need this, this rung number. So like at a, a bigger manufacturing plant, they might have their wire numbers might be four digits. The first digit would say, what's the page number? And so when you get out to a manufacturing plant, they're going to have these massive motor controls and they're going to have multiple pages because they can't even fit the schematics all on one page. So that's going to be what page it is. So first number might be page number five. Okay. The second number might be what rung it's on. So it might be page five rung two wire number um, six or something like that. And that would be written zero six. So there'd be two numbers at the end of that um, that, that four digit number that worked to indicate what wire we were working with. All right. So that's, and that's a very popular style. I've seen that a few times. Um, it's just, it's really easy. So you got this, you pull a random wire out to something that's not working and now you can easily trace it to what page it's going to be on, uh, what rung it's going to be on. It's really going to make it easier. Most of the stuff we're going to be doing in this class, it's going to be just one, um, one motor control. They are going to be bigger than this one. This is a very basic one but we can fit them all on one page, okay? So it's really good to get the idea that that's, that's what we're gonna be using to troubleshoot. Now, some of the other styles I have seen, I have seen them use letters. Um, the letters usually indicate something to do with a, like a grid pattern. There might be a, across the top, it might have letters, and wherever that letter lines up, that will be the wire number, okay? But that's, gonna, that's getting pretty intricate, and again, that's something maybe you're gonna have to, you know, talk to the people that work at that plant, and really try to understand and learn. Just know these wire numbers are very important. And we also are trying to really get you guys in the habit of high quality, you know, making sure that you're doing it right. And those wire numbers are gonna be a, a big way that we do it, okay? So just remember, transformers almost always at the top. Um, we've got our breaker, where a lot of times we're gonna have the X1 for our, tr our transformer because we wanna keep this one all number one. Um, this one is going to be a common wire. If we did have multiple pages and this wire ran through multiple pages, it would always be wire number one. It doesn't matter what page it was on, okay? Um, every time we go through a, a, a terminal, or I'm sorry, every time we go through a component, the wire number is gonna change. And if on our hot side, we're gonna have it wire colored red, so pretty much everything on this side, while our return is always going to be white. So. Sorry for the lengthy talk. Um, just remember as you're wiring together all of your new um, circuits, you're making sure to put the wires on. I will have a video showing how to put them on, but it's pretty much just a sticker that's wrapped around. And we wanna try to make sure it's within about a quarter of an inch to the end of that wire where it connects into that component, okay? Um, the only other thing is you wanna make sure you have your wire color correct. Um, so go ahead and let's, uh, let's continue on, guys.